style Bought a crooked kitten That caught a crooked mouse And together they lived happily In a little crooked house I met a crooked man Crooked for he could not see And yet he opened up a whole new world to me Taught me how to build a castle with a grain of sand And how to catch a rainbow in the palm of my hand I met a crooked man, crooked for he could not hear Yet he could make me laugh if ever came a tear to sing and dance and whistle down the hall and through these things I learned he wasn't so crooked after all I met a crooked man crooked for he had no shoes only had one pair of pants two shirts from which to choose yet he took me through the green grass fields with the blue skies up above You taught me how to love Crooked Man, Crooked Mile A crooked sixpence, crooked style A crooked kitten, crooked mouse Together they lived happily in a little crooked house Together they lived happily in a little crooked So Elijah, you kind of think after reading the story of Elijah, Ahab, and Jezebel, the nation of Israel, that Elijah put his faith in a God of the hopeless, like all the prophets of God and men and women of God were a hopeless group of people. They were being murdered and slaughtered at will. And that's I guess there was a time when throughout world history for a while the Christian nation the believers of the God of Israel weren't persecuted but that, that was a short lived time and may have only been inside of the American culture that that was true Most of world history, all the Christians, believers, the believers of the God of Israel have been persecuted, beat down, broke down, <laughs> violated, murdered throughout all of history. And, it, and it's interesting because The God of Israel promised so many wonderful things. Made wonderful, huge promises to the people. So we wonder where did those promises come from? It seemed like the God of Israel was very silent until up until the time Elijah appeared Jezebel and Ahab were raping, murdering, pillaging 
their own people, their own nation. <laughs> the greatest enemy to Israel at that time was the king and the queen. Kind of feels like nothing's changed in our society, in our world. It's still like that. The greatest enemy to the people are the very people we have placed in, in charge of ruling over us. <laughs> How does that happen? What happened? How does that work? Seems weird, doesn't it? Seems strange and peculiar. Elijah thought he was the last prophet of God. Man. Truly believed he was better and all the prophets of Baal. They murdered. They robbed, they stole. Workers of slander. And in the end, you know, Elijah really was no different than them. Even he had to come to that place in life to admit he was just like them. He was just like his ancestors. The only thing is, he slaughtered all of them. <laughs> he didn't leave any of the prophets of Baal mercy. He killed them all, destroyed them all. But he believed. I think it's interesting in the story of Elijah that even in his sin, even in his wickedness, he was still able to participate in the, you know, presence of God. The presence of God. after he had lined up everybody there in the valleys of Megiddo. He slaughtered them all. Went and hid himself. Hid himself in a cave, climbed up in the mountains hid himself in the cave and he was waiting for, for God to appear, God to manifest himself to him. And he did and he, and he manifested himself through a small still voice. It wasn't manifested to him through the storm through a wind, through the thunder, the lightning, or any of that kind of stuff. Instead, he, he manifested himself to Elijah through a small, still voice, a whisper, speaking into his ear. The Lord asked Elijah, 
What do you want? What is it you desire? And Elijah apparently wanted to confess. Confess his sins, confess his iniquity, confess his inability to live peaceably amongst his enemies. <laughs> I think that's a lot of us, you know. I preach a message and I preach against people sinning and everybody always, and, and instead of changing their life to become a better person, they complain about what I, the message I preach. <laughs> and. You know, but those same people who complain, they, they do the very least of everything and anything. They don't, you know, I, I, I say if you're somebody's friend and you want to be the friend of somebody, you, you, be that friend by fulfilling the actions that define friendship. You, you be there for them during a crisis. And you just simply be there. If you really wanted to be somebody's friend, you know, during those times of of despair and problems and hopelessness. You're there for them, you know. When your friend loses their job, you don't disappear. You show up and you comfort them. When your friend is going through some of the toughest struggles in their life, you, you, you show up in, in such a way you, you, you can be seen, you, you can be known, you know. Uh, that's the thing is, a lot of my ministry is on the internet. And I've said it many times, and I still believe it, that there's, you know, really, really haven't never made any friends on the internet. There's one person I would like to call my friend, but the reality is that we're just acquaintances, not real friends, because real friends do these certain things for one another. And it, 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 it's not about selfish gain or selfishness, being there for one another. And I, you know, maybe that's what we see in Elijah's story that the only friend he had was that of Christ. His friend was Jesus Christ. His friend was God. And we know when Elijah was on top of the mountain and God spoke, Jesus was there. Jesus was there at the transfiguration on the mountain, and so was Elijah and Moses. So when Elijah and Moses met God, when they heard the voice of God, they also saw the face of Jesus Christ. All of them said, or God said to all of them, I should say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to him. He was 
definitely a man who was acquainted with rejection. A man who, when he was in the midst of a crisis, had no friends. When he had troubles and problems, there, there was nobody to turn to, to be comforted by, you know, his companions all deserted him. They scattered, they left, and they did that because God desired to fulfill the scriptures, the scriptures that were written about the Messiah. I mean, the, the, the nation of Israel received the Messiah, the Christ, as, as a devil, as the devil, as a messenger of Beelzebub, which was the prince of demons. Beel. Not a messenger of God, but that uh, of and, you know, Jesus does speak against Jezebel and the Jezebel spirit, the spirit of grandiosity, grandiosity, you know, and the spirit of Jezebel always seeking to lead the people of God away from God through manipulating them through their desires for pleasure and not just any pleasure but through sexual pleasure. You know, I, I see it all over the internet and all the complaints, you know, people want to engage in social media and one of the reasons me, we, the, the social media app, which is similar to that of, you know, Facebook, but without all the rules or, you know, the prohibiting you to freedom of speech and the freedom to make friends with any person you so choose. You know, they, it has freedom. But it also comes with a lot of evil and uh, a lot of Marxism, a lot of communist people, a lot of people who are sexually demented, you know. Uh, there was a time, you know, back in the day when uh, if you went out into public, into public places, and you wore a trench coat and was completely naked under your trench coat and then pulled open your coat in front of women and children and, and mothers and fathers and, and decent people. <laughs> that, that was considered a crime and decent exposure. And, and we saw those people as being filled with some sort of, of mental illness. They were sick. And People want to go on to social media places and just have an opportunity to meet other people, but always being confronted by, by this madness and the sickness of these people constantly subjecting everyone to vile, rude, disgusting, sexual and moral behavior. Trying, trying to break down people to break down your morals and it, it, it's that's why people don't even want to use Miri anymore and I've seen it you know when first started it was it was used and people were using it it's a great app the way it's laid out the way it, it's it is and the way it presents itself it, it's good but Wicked and evil people destroy it. And then there's no like oversight of it. There's no, nothing being done about it.
trying to condition good people into believing <laughs> that that's not sick, strange, or demonic behavior. These people are, are filled with that Jezebel spirit. And in all of it, you know, I've been on that app for four or five years now. And uh, still haven't made a real friend, a, a solid, good connection with anyone, anyone. That's sad, it's heartbreaking, it's, it's weird, got a little bit of wind coming in. It's one thing about where I live, the weather sucks here. It's never nice. It's either windy, way too hot, and windy, it's cold, and it's windy, or it's really cold, and it's windy, but it, it's never nice. <laughs> it's always some kind of crap weather. It is a nice, warm, beautiful day today. It feels good to be outside, get a little sunshine. Here in a little bit I'm going to take the dog for a walk. Gotta get my exercise. We all need purpose in life. Me, the, the less I have to do, the more down I feel, right? Don't you feel that way ever? You, you gotta have some sort of, of purpose in life. And if you don't have a purpose, if you don't have something to do in life that puts within you purpose, and, and you know, I think that's, Something we also see in Elijah's story. He, his purpose in life was to represent the Word of God and to represent the Word of God faithfully. With respect, with honor, with reverence. They say the devil going to come into the world only to deceive the world that that's the devil's genre agenda to deceive the world and it's interesting how willing people are are desire how willing people desire to allow themselves to be used by the devil to fulfill that deception. I will be anything and I will be everything, but I won't be myself. I, I hide myself under a false image. I hide myself under a false name. And they hide themselves under false names and images so that they can't be held accountable for anything. Or anything. And, you know, they present themselves to you in the form of deception, a, a covering up of the truth. And, and trust me, these people can't be trusted in any way. And, you know, I've met a lot of people who hide themselves under an avatar. You know, they even come up with a name for it, an, an avatar. A false image. Deception. And, and they are the sons of the liars. They are the sons of the devil as the devil has an agenda, right? To come into the world to deceive it, and yet they allow themselves to be used as that form of deception. Which 
This is weird. It's weird how nobody has reverence for honesty, truth, friendship, integrity. Got a couple neighbors walking by here. Coming down the alley. It's weird how not only have I not been able to make friends on the internet, I don't even make friends here in, in my realm of life. <laughs> and the babies coming in. Feathers are all coming in. They're just about ready to stay out all night, but it does get, you know, getting down into the 30s at night. There's the big fat mama duck harassing the babies. I'm trying to show the little ones who's boss, I guess. She's sitting on some eggs, though. Maybe she'll have a few babies of her own. I don't know. We'll see. I think we only got one female out of those three. The brown, the gray, and the black. I'm not sure about the other three. They're black and yellow, or black and white. We got one female there. We want the females, we want the eggs. The males we're gonna eat. Found a place to process the males for food. My sister's got a few ducks and uh, her males are just beating up all the other ducks, beating themselves up. And, but they're real big and fat. Hey girl, got my dog here. So we're gonna eat them. <laughs> and duck isn't bad. These guys are fat and plump, so it should taste good. Yeah, I don't have a, a plucker or a way to pluck the feathers, and I'm not going to do it by hand. That's just too much of a mess, too much work. Send them out and have them processed. Got the little kids in the back. Little duckies. There goes the boy. Cruising down and going to work. Son just passed by. In his work truck. Yeah, I think I should take the dog for a walk. I complain a lot, and, you know, I'll probably continue complaining all the way up until that day when I find a friend. 
until that day I, I, I actually find a, a good friend. Who knows? I gotta go down to the local movie theater. I work part time at the local movie theater. Gotta go get my paycheck today. <laughs> it ain't much. It's very small, but it's it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. Mowed the lawn today, a little tractor mower, which isn't bad. First Kings, Chapter Seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Right there's Ahab, Jezebel, Elijah. Something they, you know, they did in the story. You know, that's the thing with Jezebel is she brought into the nation the worship of an idol. Biel. Which was an idol. And and they began, she brought in this, this belief that you could please God by sacrificing your children, killing your children. Can you please God by killing your children? Can you can you even display love, love for anything? Can you display love for your children or yourself if you're killing them? I mean, literally murdering them, killing them. You know, I I, I very much doubt it and I, I don't believe it. I don't believe anybody who kills their children love God. I don't believe they love themselves either. It's one thing about what Elijah is. Sure, maybe God is the God of the hopeless, but in those who are hopeless, they have a God. And that God gives them hope. And, and such a great amount of hope that they see tomorrow as being bright and full of good. And their hope is in good, their hope is in love. And so they do the best they can to raise their children to be the best people they can be. You know, and I, and I think that's some things that People like to distort about my preaching and my messages is I I want you to be the best person you can be. I want you to be the best friend you could you can be. I want you to be the best wife you can be, the best husband you can be. And in that In that, you have to have a strong sense of right and wrong. 
good and bad. Love and hate. I mean, it makes me wonder why or how a, a could, a people could be led so far astray from a God who loved them to believe that the killing and the murdering of their own children was a display of any kind of love at all, especially when right there in the commandments of God, thou shall not murder. And murder is taking the life of an innocent person. How could a child not be innocent? How can the murder of children not be seen as evil? I don't know. A lot of people say that the United States of America is in the midst of self-destruction. And, and I don't think it's in the midst of self-destruction. I think wicked and evil people who are who are full of the devil. Are seeking to destroy America. The people of America. Greed. Greed. He's a killer. <laughs> disgusting. You can see in the story of, of Ahab and Jezebel that they, they were a people filled with greed. Naboth had a vineyard that, that, that he got through inheritance. His, his family, God gave to his family this vineyard, this this land. And Ahab says to Nebuchadnezzar, hey, your, your vineyard's right next to my property. Just, just give it to me. I'll buy it from you. I'll purchase it from you. It, what he had wasn't enough. It envy, jealousy, covenant, your neighbor's things. So everything the Bible says don't do, they were doing, worshiping, carven images, murdering their children, covenanting their neighbor's things. And in that we find envy and strife and jealousy. We find the presence of the devil. Through the power and the works of slander, Jezebel comes up with the idea because Naboot said to Ahab, no, you cannot have my property. It's mine. You can't have it. It's not for sale. And Ahab was upset, sad, depressed. Jezebel comes up with the idea to slander Nabu's name amongst the elders of their community and to have him stoned to death. And they followed through. They were workers of slander, hatred, murder, theft, robbery. Jesus said, though, Jezebel and her children will be placed in a bed of utter suffering. 
they will be the ones placed in the bed of suffering. And maybe that suffering is yet to be seen. And I say yet to be seen. Sure, for a time, for a time, they'll have this authority. But that authority will come to an end. Their power will come to an end. Their ability to lead God's children astray will come to an end. And maybe that end is seen there in the afterlife. They won't be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven where there is no pain, tears, suffering, hunger, thirst. Don't be like them. That's the message. We talk about the things that are wicked and evil and then ask ourselves, what am I? What represents me? Am I just like them? <laughs> 